This October and November marks the centennial of the events surrounding what became known as the Everett Massacre. To commemorate this event, Everett Public Library will present a series of programs that will portray an Everett unimaginably different from today's, will reveal pressures that led to this catastrophic outburst, and will examine its surprising aftermath. The series will include the most authoritative speakers we could find about the Everett Massacre, plus displays, book discussions, music, films, and some surprises. This fall at the Everett Public Library, learn about the Everett of 1916 and its inevitable march into a fusillade that has echoed through history. On Sunday, November 5th, 1916, about 300 members of the Industrial Workers of the World, the IWW, boarded the steamers Verona and Callista from Seattle and headed north toward Port Gardner Bay and Everett. The IWW, or Wobblies, planned a public demonstration in Everett that afternoon to be held on the corner of Hewitt and Wetmore, a spot commonly used by street speakers. Hoping to gain converts to their dream of one big union, the Wobblies had begun street speaking in Everett a few months earlier during a local shingle weavers strike. In the months since, IWW speakers encountered increasingly brutal suppression by local law officers and hundreds of deputized citizens. Adopting the model they had used successfully elsewhere, the IWW recruited members to defy authorities and make political speeches on Everett's streets. The Wobblies called this a free speech fight. On that November 5th, word reached Everett that these IWW men, described as armed anarchists, were coming to burn their town. 200 citizen deputies under the authority of Snohomish County Sheriff Donald McRae met to repel the invaders. The Verona arrived first, pulling in alongside the dock. McRae asked, who is your leader? When he was told, we are all leaders, he informed passengers they could not land. A single shot was fired, followed by several minutes of chaotic shooting. Whether the first shot came from a boat or dock was never determined. Passengers aboard the Verona rushed to the opposite side of the ship, nearly capsizing the vessel. Bullets pierced the pilot house, and the Verona's captain struggled to back it out of port. The Kalista returned to Seattle without trying to land. On the dock, deputies Jefferson Beard and Charles Curtis lay dying, and 20 others, including the sheriff, were wounded. On the Verona's deck, Wobblies Hugo Gerlet, Abraham Rabinowitz, Gus Johnson, and John Looney were dead, and Felix Barron lay dying. While the official IWW toll was listed as five dead and 27 wounded, it's likely that as many as 12 Wobblies lost their lives, their bodies surreptitiously recovered from the bay at a later date. It marked the bloodiest battle in Pacific Northwest labor history. Please join the Everett Public Library this fall as we commemorate these events of a hundred years ago.